Sir, I'm sorry. <laughs> Manage this for Christmas. Here, nobody is managing anything. <laughs> you will be managed in prison. I say, me as full fledged madam. Some people know they respect me. Now, hippopotamus, you want me to respect. <laughs> in my mind, I was like, where is your shame, baby girl? <laughs> children are here, no. Uchike. Cover your bum bum, no. Eh? Look at children are here. Married men are here, too. <laughs> So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Neze Peperempe. <laughs> welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new here, hello, my name is Barista Chineze, and I'm a new immigrant in Canada. And on this channel, I document my life, my life as a working woman, a mom, a wife, and all of that. And I also take you guys through my journey relocating to Canada, everything that I've learned and the wealth of knowledge at my disposal because I believe that there is love in sharing. So having spent some months in Canada, in today's video, I'm going to be letting you guys know, especially newer immigrants, people that will also come behind me, come after me, I'll be informing us on those usuals, those lifestyles, those normalcies back home that can put us in big trouble right here in Canada, okay? Change is not easy for an adult coming from a place where so many things are deemed normal to a place that is a lot more structured, organized, and you know, conservative. If we do not check ourselves and if we are not guided, we might find ourselves making some mistakes that can put us in trouble. So in today's video, I'm going to be revealing things that are considered normal back home that over here in Canada are illegal or they can put you in trouble. So sit back, let us begin. The first thing is traffic offenses. And when I say traffic offenses, there are so many things we did wrong back home that was very normal to us. But here it is not accepted and in fact it can be illegal. Stuff like driving above speed limits. At every point in the road, there are speed indicators by the side. Acceptable speed limits that you must not exceed while driving. When you're on the express, there is a specific speed limit for that. When you're around school areas, of course, you should be slower. When you're around maybe wildlife or animals, there are speed limits. So you are guided by these speed limits and the walk. Because if you check the ratio of accidents over here, compared to back home, you will see that back home, more people die annually from road accidents than here. That's because they have this structure in place to ensure that people are driving at a reasonable pace. So driving above specific speed limits can put you in trouble. Beating traffic signs. <laughs> this is very funny traffic law. There are these spots that you get to, you see the stop sign. Now, whether there's a vehicle coming, whether you see anything or not, even if it's in the middle of the night and you're the only one on the road, when you get to that stop sign, Igawa break. <laughs> it's not slow down. No. Stop means stop. You must come to a complete stop before you continue, even when you cannot see anything or anyone within sight. That is their traffic law and that you must obey. In Nigeria, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you took head, I took head. You and Keke go the fight. Motorcycle day your left, Keke na pep day your right. Bumper to bumper in front. Nobody must enter your front. If the driver in front is annoying you, you will just go like this, wham, jump in his front. You know, you drive anyhow. <laughs> but over here, you dare not drive that way. You might think that nobody is watching, nobody will catch you, but there are cameras stationed at strategic parts of the roads. And by the time you get home, you might just get a ticket. You might just get a penalty for driving wrongly. And if you keep getting tickets, your license can be seized and you might even be prosecuted if they find that what you are doing is endangering the lives of others. So when you relocate to Canada or any Western country at all, please study their traffic rules. All those documents that they read to pass traffic exam, don't just read it to read and forget just to get your license. Read to internalize so you don't get into trouble because traffic offenses are a big thing here and once your license is seized, ha, you might suffer, you have to start flying 
buses and trains for years before they can even consider you for parole so traffic offenses not a big deal in nigeria not a big deal in some african countries too but over here it is a big deal the second major thing that can put you in trouble that was a very normal thing in nigeria like where i'm coming from but over here <laughs> you can go to prison you will just see yourself away from your family for years you know thief you know rob you know kill you know rape you could see yourself for prison you'll be asking yourself lord is this is this what i came here to do is evading tax <laughs> not declaring your income evading tax they take taxing very important in western countries in nigeria so many people do not pay tax especially those that do not work in structured organizations i've always worked in structured organizations from the bank to the conglomerate where i worked our tax was automatic we used to pay very heavily even my husband hey his own tax eh? you would even cry if you see the amount of money that is deducted yes it's a lot painful back home because you are taxed so heavily but you're not seeing the dividends of the tax the roads are bad the schools are bad the hospitals are not working so it's painful right but the truth is that many people in africa many people in nigeria do not pay tax those teachers in small private schools those people that have small small businesses here and there many of them find a way to you know game the system and do not pay tax now you know how it is even if they catch you you can just say sir i'm sorry <laughs> manage this for weekend sir i'm sorry <laughs> manage this for christmas in here <laughs> here nobody is managing anything <laughs> you will be managed in prison tax evasion is very serious you can imagine someone like shakira as big as she is she couldn't even wiggle her way away from tax problems so this is a system that works the taxes are applied yes the taxing system might be heavy but when you see the benefits it's a bit bearable do not carry that mentality and impression of doing wuru and wayo when it comes to your income and taxing over here because you might get into trouble that is another normal thing in nigeria that's over here it is very abnormal and it can get you into serious shit now as i proceed with this video for those that have lived here longer than i have for those that have a lot more experience with the way the system works please contribute in the comment section okay let's newer people go to the comment section and gain from your experience gain from your wealth of knowledge okay what are those things that you should be very careful about when you relocate to canada that could put you in trouble so please let us know in the comment section what you have learned keep us abreast ignorance of the law does not excuse nobody is going to release you from a crime that you committed or a wrong that you did just because you didn't know that it was wrong ignorance of the law does not excuse so our seniors in the game <laughs> those that were here before us please share all your experiences down in the comment section so let's move to number three so the next normal thing in nigeria normal thing in back home in africa that is a big deal here and that can put you in some serious trouble with the law is corporal punishment what is corporal punishment the use of force cane flogging to discipline children so when i came here of course i've been doing reading mingling with people socializing interacting and from all these processes i'm getting plenty of information and knowledge if you guys know nezer you know that i'm someone that likes to seek information right so i've come across a law very surprising a lot of people do not even know that that it is allowed to spank in canada spanking is allowed let me read it to you some people believe that you cannot even touch your child because you're in the abroad you're in the obodo Ibo. no that's not true you can spank but let me read this close to you now this is what the law says the criminal code hmm? section 43 of the criminal code provides that every school teacher parent or person standing in the place of a parent is justified in using force by way of correction towards a pupil or child as the case may be who is under their care if the force does not exceed what is reasonable 
under that circumstance. Reasonability is the benchmark. So you can use force, but let it be commensurate. Let it not be unreasonable. Let it not inflict injury or bodily harm. Let it not be with a weapon. So if your child is misbehaving and you take the child and you give the child some good spanking on the butt, it is not an offense in Canada. It is not a crime. Do let me know. Is it a crime where you are? I know that Germany, they are very strict with children and child laws. Is it a crime in Spain? Is it a crime in the US? Is it a crime wherever you are in the West? Do let me know what the law is. But <laughs> when I saw this one, I read it out to my children and I say, <laughs> come, let me read the riot act to you just in case you will go to school and fellow children tell you otherwise. Look at the law. <laughs> so if you do anyhow, <laughs> you just might see anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> and they were laughing so that is the law okay but in nigeria there are no benchmarks that are enforceable in fact so many states in the north are still yet to domesticate the child rights act because this child rights act prohibits um child bride and getting married to an underage child so many of the legislators in the core northern states have still refused to domesticate the child rights acts because many of them love to marry children it's crazy but let's not talk about all of that but what i'm saying is that yes in the child rights act the use of unreasonable force is prohibited but that law is not enforceable in many states of Nigeria is not a national law but in Canada it is a national law you do not use extreme force on children many of us are already used to beating our children and beating them so bad <laughs> belt cane spoon plate mm. ah. as a child is running you carry your slippers mm. Hi. Hey, whoa. on the child's head the child will fall flat then you run mm. catch the child Boy. you unleash all the stress physical stress psychological stress mental stress of yesteryears you unleash it on the poor child over here that can get you into serious trouble i do not even want to read the whole extent of the law for you but the law even specifies that even assaults are a crime but when it comes to children they give extended jail term so if you had if you assault an adult and maybe it's five years jail term for children it just might be 10 years just imagine you doing that normal thing you do in nigeria to correct your child and you come and do it and you find yourself in prison <laughs> and you are wondering where have i gone wrong so it is a big deal here you have to be careful how you hit your children even though spanking children is allowed is permissible you have to be careful how you do it in public many nigerians when they want to spank their children they still take them to the inner chambers <laughs> to their secret place and you know unleash not just to be doing it in public place like nigeria in, in boss you can just give your child bossa conk do anyhow please be careful physical emotional and psychological harm to children are taken very very seriously the fourth point that can put one in trouble here that's back home it seems like normalcy is parental negligence or should i say parental irresponsibility over here it's like nobody forced you to be a parent so if you choose to be a parent you must be responsible for the children that you brought into the world all those i'm too busy you miss out on appointments anytime you feel like they won't go to school maybe you can't take them you are late all the time doctor's appointments you don't show up dental appointments you're always late that is an act of parental recklessness parental negligence and it can put you in trouble in many countries in the west if your child misses school often or if your child misses doctor's appointments often the medical professional or the teacher has a right to call the authorities and report your irresponsibility and you'll be held account for that but in nigeria <laughs> now you get picking nobody is forcing you nobody is trailing you nobody is monitoring you do whatever you please with your child it is not here now all of them get picking for here now governments get picking for here so you have to be very very careful with the children you cannot just go into a mall let go of your children and they start wondering or they get missing or they get lost or they get injured or they get you will be held responsible for whatever happens to that child so please take notes the next point that seems just okay back home but over here is a big deal is illegal killing of animals <laughs> in my culture shock video i explained to you guys how important animals are to these people these people attach a lot of significance 
to living things be you a human being be you animal even plants they love plants living things are giving respect i remember when we went to the zoo you see inscriptions like respect the penguins respect the hippopotamus Res i say me as full-fledged madame some people know they respect me now hippopotamus you want me can respect <laughs> Which kind of respect? No, let me come and double for the hippopotamus now. <laughs> Hi! So, these people respect animals. It's not like Nigeria. You can just see a chicken coming into your field. You carry big stone. Oh, there. You stone the, the chicken. Sometimes the chicken will even die. Or you are driving in the night. You see a cat passing. You just increase your speed. You crush the cat. There are some people that <laughs> share the Roham Mao. They derive pleasure in crushing animals, especially in the night. They'll crush rabbits, crush rats crush um, snake, crush monkey, crush bed, anything, any animal, they just kill it. Over here, you treat animals with respect. You don't have any right to hurt an animal or kill an animal. If you see an animal within your vicinity and you feel unsafe, you call the animal control. You don't just, maybe you have a licensed weapon, you don't just launch your weapon that just shoots the antelope down or you just, maybe a rabbit comes into your field you just <laughs> wounded the rabbit and cooked pepper soup. <laughs> you just kidnapped the rabbit and cooked pepper soup. No, 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 no. Animals have their rights and you must respect animals. Back home, animals are like, <laughs> do whatever you please. In fact, some boys back then in school, on Saturday, they can just wear their boxers and go and start looking for any stray chicken or goat, kill it and cook pepper soup. All the boys will eat. Over here, you need to treat animals with respect another thing that can push you in trouble over here that is normalcy back home is littering and loitering litter and loiter litter throwing your debts indiscriminately anywhere in fact then uh, if you have sense uh, many of these rules should not be too hard for you to follow because i do not even back home i find it very offensive when i see some full-fledged adults who just eat something out of their window through the nylon please if you do that eh, stop it it's very irresponsible even if that place is dirty you have no right to add to the debt now coming to a country where everywhere is clean everywhere is clean down to the streets the government invests a lot of money to keep the environment clean and healthy you now come and start littering that can cause you trouble loitering around people's properties also can also put you in trouble you heard about the black child that knocked at the wrong door in america and got shot just by showing up at the wrong porch at the wrong front of a house got him shot so this place is not a place where you just walk into someone's house and just start knocking on the door you have to call before you visit anybody you have to be mindful of people's space people like their space over here you can't be loitering and trespassing into people's properties when you go to a place and you are done there you leave the vicinity you do not loiter so please be very careful with that do not litter and do not loiter the next thing that can push you in big trouble over here is enforcing your ideologies and principles on others we nigerians we black people have a terrible habit of setting a standard for ourselves and expecting other people to conform to it i do not celebrate halloween why should you i do not tell my children to do that why should you i do not do this why should you forgetting that your standards are not everybody's standards and you must learn to live and let live when you understand and embrace that principle of living and letting to live you will see that you hardly get into trouble or disputes with other people especially when it's not a concern of um endangerment of health maybe when or endangerment of life maybe what somebody is doing is hurting somebody if it's not hurting somebody if it hurts nobody if it does not if it doesn't hurt you or if it doesn't hurt any human being why must you insist that somebody's ideologies must be like yours who set yours for you you set yours by yourself voluntarily so we have this terrible practice in africa of enforcing our beliefs on people anybody that does not conform to our dictates or to the standards of our right and wrong 
we see that person as doing the wrong thing. Over here in Canada, such mindsets and mentality can put you in trouble. So there you are coming from a very highly conservative country where people are highly opinionated and believe that their own standards should be world's best practice. To a country where there are countless cultures, countless people, indigenous from different places, all coexisting and cohabiting as one. There is zero tolerance for lack of acceptance. Let me just paint a perfect scenario to you. A few days ago, my kids and I went swimming, okay? And in that pool, there were ladies that, <laughs> handkerchief is too big, baby face towel, hmm? you can, the bikini they were wearing, hmm? baby face towel can sew four of those bikinis. Those tiny thing here, covering their, <laughs> here, and tongue, hmm? the whole ike. Ike Sarambara was out to the full glare. Bum Bum was out staring. I was like, hey! In my mind, I was like, where is your shame, baby girl? <laughs> children are here, no. Muchike, cover your Bum Bum, no. Eh? Look at children are here. Married men are here too. Hogging it. That is a joke. So there were women wearing tongues in that pool. There were women wearing swimming suits. Beating, normal bathing suits, swimming suits in the pool. There were women wearing shorts, shorts and shirts in the pool. And there were women, like some Arab women, that were wearing long sleeve eh? and trouser leggings. Not tight leggings, but baggy leggings covered from neck to leg in that pool. People with different ideologies, different life perception, different religion, different concepts of right and wrong, all together in that pool swimming happily and nobody is condemning the other person for how they look and what they wear that is canada so beware lbgtqroh is a big thing here when you go to big stores you will see their flag different colors you are accepted everybody is welcome here same-sex marriage is legal here gender reassignment surgery is so normal that it's made provisions for in healthcare. It's covered by healthcare. That should give you an idea of the level of inclusion, diversity, and acceptance that is practiced here. So coming with your African mentality that as a born again Christian, you shouldn't do this. As a child of God, you shouldn't do that. You might stay and say, oh, after all, I'm not approaching anybody. I'm not forcing my idea on anybody. But when you have that concept, it will reflect in your day-to-day -day life. It will reflect at your place of work. You won't even know when you're exhibiting those biases and prejudices. And before you know it, you will get into trouble. So here, nobody will force you to be LGBTQRTU. Nobody will force you to be queer. Nobody will force you to be Christian. Accept your practice and live it happily and nobody will disturb you. I remember when I just came, when we just arrived, that we went to the Catholic Canada, is it Calgary Catholic Immigration Services? Is a Catholic settlement agency. Hindus were there. Muslims were there. Pagans were there. Getting settlement services from a Catholic immigration society. In Nigeria, one church will tell you, even from the same from the same umbrella church they'll tell you this is not your parish you cannot get this thing here go to your parish the case of a muslim coming to a church or a, a christian going to a mosque to get entitlement that is back home for you all those unnecessary barricades and stigmatization and all that it's a big thing back home but over here you have to dilute it be culturally sensitive and have respect for the diverse and multicultural nation that you have chosen to immigrate to. The next point is verbal abuse. Coming from a country where <laughs> sometimes if you don't raise your voice, if you don't act crazy, if you don't shout, you might not get attention. Some people will come to the bank, even when they explain the normal process of things to them, they believe that it's only when they shout that things will be done. Over here, it is not just physical abuse that is a crime. Over here, verbal abuse can also put you in trouble, can also give you a bad record, can also make you spend some hours behind bars. The thing is that it's not just a law, it's more of a cultural thing. Emotions here are very controlled. You hardly see people act out of emotions. You must learn to keep a calm, low-key and light-hearted attitude and approach 
to situations even when they are not going your way. Avoid public display of anger. Avoid showing yourself. <laughs> Avoid showing yourself. These guys here are very calm. They are very polite. They are very conservative. And they are very, you know, they are very well tempered. Let me just put it that way. And well mannered. Save for some exceptions. So when you come to a place like that, you are a minority. Whether you like it or not, you are a minority. When we went to swim, I was just looking around that day. In the whole pool with all the people there, we were the only blacks. Despite the number of people that are immigrating from Africa, no matter the number of immigration happening, hmm, you are still a minority when you are coming to someone's country, right? So every experience with you is a benchmark to how that person would perceive or the impression that that person would have of that whole country, of that whole race. So you always have to leave a good impression. If you go out and you constitute nuisance or you create trouble, that person will have an everlasting mark of that is how Nigerians behave. So every time you're acting in ambassadorial capacity, coming over here and shouting and yelling or raising your voice or being disrespectful or rude to a front deck staff can get you in trouble. In fact, they can call the police on you. When you go to public offices, you will see it pasted there. Do not disrespect is prohibited here. Verbal abuse is prohibited here. Do not do it. So please watch your temper and be calm. Okay. So guys, I'll just bring this video to an end here. I hope you've been able to pick a thing or two. For those that have lived in the West longer than we have, we would appreciate all your own knowledge and experiences down in the comment section so we all can read and learn and be aware all right so if you're new here or if you're just seeing my face for the first time don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up drop your comments in the comment section turn on your bell notifications and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way don't forget also that we have channel membership up on this channel so if you want to show your love and appreciation for all the work that we do and all the premium content that we bring to your way here don't forget that you can subscribe to join my membership you can just click join that icon join down below or email me at nezaville at gmail.com thank you so much guys for watching it's me your girl barista neze neze mwa neze pepe rempe and this is neze pepe rempe i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye